Hi everyone, today we'll start machining the new rods for the 1 inch little engine specific. I'm using 316 stainless steel, mostly because I've always wanted to try making rods out of stainless and 316 isn't too bad to work with. Here's a quick overview of the order of operations I've chosen to machine these rods. I like to start with the top profile. It's very predictable how the metal will move after it's cut off, and it moves in a direction that's not detrimental to the rod's look or function. I'm leaving 50 thousandths on the top, bottom, and sides of the rods, so there's a little room for error on the final profile. After the first milling operation, the bearing centers will be bored out and the rods fluted on both sides. I don't put the flutes in with the key cutter in the first operation, because the way the material moves, the flutes would wind up warped in the same direction as the material. And the material will move enough that it would be visually noticeable that the flutes are off center. Then the rods are bolted down to an aluminum block and the profiles machined. Lastly, the holes for the dummy oil cups are drilled and tapped. Before we do all that, we need to saw cut the material to length and set up the mill. I'm not going to show me saw cutting every piece because that would be very boring. But for the sake of showing the whole process, Here's a little montage of some saw cutting. We've got enough material for four side rods and two main rods. There's a little extra material just in case I make a mistake. Tools 1 and 2 are both half inch 5 flute end mills, one for roughing and one for finishing. Tool 3 is a 3 16 diameter long reach end mill for slotting the rear rod, and tool 4 is a long 5 32 end mill for finishing the slot. Then, a chamfer mill to save on some handy burring and last is a carbide key cutter to cut off the part. These are really incredible key cutters from Internal Tool. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now to change out the jaws. The fastest way to do nearly anything is to break it down into small steps and do them one at a time. So first I'm breaking all the bolts loose. Then loosening them all the way. then removing them, then taking out all the jaws, then putting in the new soft jaws. If I took out each jaw from start to finish one at a time it would end up taking quite a bit longer. Same deal for putting the soft jaws in, one thing at a time. Now to melt a shelf into the jaws. My parallels weren't giving me the right height I needed for this material, so this will allow me to sink the material below the jaws as much as possible. This coated end mill is definitely the wrong tool for aluminum, but with light cuts and lots of coolant, it'll be okay for this quick operation. I definitely do not recommend cutting aluminum with this coating unless you have flood coolant and they're taking very light cuts and it's only if you need to do it in a pinch. Now we'll load the material into the vise. This is for the rear rod. Gotta make sure these vices are really tight so we don't have any chatter or movement of the material. The Heimer 3D indicator allows me to locate the X, Y, and Z pretty quickly. It's good for maybe one or two thousandths, so for more accurate edge finding I'll use the test indicator, but for quickly locating raw material it's more than adequate. Just gotta be careful. I've broken more than my fair share of probes on these, and they're not terribly cheap to replace. 
Now to make some chips. Once we get into the meat of it, I'm playing around with the RPMs a little bit to get it to where I think it sounds like it's cutting nicely. Once I get everything dialed in, I go back to my other programs and put my newfound feeds and speeds into the programs for the upcoming rods. Now we're a little further down. We're stepping down about 300 thousandths at a time, so we're not taking too heavy of a side cut. The material is not sunk down as deep as I would like. I probably should have gone with one and three quarter or two inch wide material, but this is inch and a half because it was cheaper. But now I have the risk of having a slightly less rigid setup. Now we're slotting the joining end of the rear rod. My apologies for the squeal. Now the 532nd end mill is finishing the slot. And notice the top of the slot is actually a little extra wide because that material is going to get removed. So by cutting that wider, I don't have as much material that's going to push the 532nd end mill away and cause deflection. Here I'm using gauge pins to check the slot dimension all the way through. It's a little tight, so I'll open it up about 1 thousandths and rerun the 532nd finishing end mill. This is actual speed here. And now we'll run it at 20 times. I'm still doing this in steps, just because of the length of the end mill and the material we're working with. There can be a lot of deflection in this tool. And that's perfect. Now we're running the chamfer mill over the top of the part, just so that I don't have to divert this by hand. Stainless steel is not very fun to deburr. And last is the key cutter. And still gotta go really nice and slow with these. Adjusting the RPM as necessary. We're only running at 2 inches a minute, around 700 RPM. Here it is, actual speed. It still beats running it through the saw. It probably takes about the same amount of time and it comes out much cleaner. I'll use this dirty shop towel to protect the finish while I break the rod free. There's a very small rib in the middle keeping the material from falling during the cutoff operation. So we gotta break through that. Once that snaps off, the rod will break loose. Might need just a little bit of encouragement. It looks pretty good. And I guarantee that the material warped in this direction. You can just barely see it on video, but the rod ends are making contact with the vise, and there's a small gap in the middle, probably between 5 and 10 thousandths, where the material moved. Here we're finishing up the front rod. Plunge milling the radius works much better than trying to contour it with a smaller end mill, and it leaves a much better finish. The cleanup wasted some time cutting air, but I'm only making two of these, so it's not a big deal. Checking the fit with the rear rod. It's very nice, so let's break this off. I did check the fit before running the key cutter, because if it was too tight, I could rerun the tool 
and get everything to the fit that I want before cutting the rod off. And last is the main rod. Once again, make sure everything's extremely tight. With the main rod, I'm at least holding on to more surface area. I'm indicating the X, Y, and Z on every single rod just to make sure that everything fully cleans up. And here we go. Last one. And thanks to Video Magic, it's done. The main rod didn't have too much holding it on, so I was able to break it off by hand. And you can see there's only about a quarter inch of material left in the vise, so I was cutting it pretty close. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next installment. In the next video, we'll be fluting and profiling the rods, and you'll get to see them complete and on the locomotive. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.